we would like to introduce Anna Arietta to you. Anna is a local musician that we're really excited to know. And um, she recently moved to Cardiff from Port Cole, if I'm not wrong. Right, Anna? Right, oh, nice. Yeah. Um, and so this will be her welcome. This will be her hi to us and our welcoming her to our community. So I'm very excited. We have already heard a bit of her song at the when you were joining. And um, as well as being a musician, Anna, Anna actually also works for Youth Cymru and there's quite a lot of great opportunities for young people, which we are also very interested in um, because I just love the fact that you guys are highlighting and giving opportunities to youngsters, which I've already started spreading the word about and I'm excited. But if Anna would like to talk about it, um, she will talk about it after her performance. Otherwise, we'll be shouting out about it on our um, socials. So anyway, Anna is going to perform her new release, Satellites, Unplugged and Live. Mm -hmm. And we really, really love the song already. And I'm pretty damn sure you're going to enjoy it. So let's all take a little moment to, to listen to this beautiful song with live from Anna. And thank you so much, Anna. Uh, thank you for having me. Um, I hope you enjoy. Satellites Sending signals left and right Ooh, You said a lot that day Satellites Sending signals left and right Ooh, we'll make moves tonight Chuck the vinyls in the corner Stepping off the tour bus Late night, never saw you He was waiting for her By the park, sitting in waves In a daze, never the right time But still The roses, they were lilies When she was around But when it came to play There was nothing to help me out Fear of darkness when the sun goes down Satellites Satellites Sending signals left and right Ooh You said I like that day Satellites Sending signals left and right Ooh We'll make moves tonight Said a thousand words Lost in the perimeters Of air and space Show your face There's a time and place oh, Can't speak no word out loud Che amigo como andas Dress me up in your finest and deepest Cuando quieras venir a bailar This distance makes me weak at the knees We've been out here for two weeks Cutting corners, smoking weed Time for an epiphany Please speak to me You know that I like it Can't handle the pressure, no need to be shy, kid When you're with your friends, it's never me and you know that things are always different when we are alone Because we're satellites Sending signals left and right Ooh. Satellites Satellites Sending signals left and right Ooh Said a lot that day Satellites Sending signals left and right Ooh We See, 
Okay, people are clapping, no jar fans, but uh, thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Beautiful. Anna, thank you so much. I feel all the all the feels. Oh, thank you. Does everyone agree? No? Yeah. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so good. Okay, we get in we get in praises. Do um do do follow um Anna or check her music out on the Spotify link that um Laurie has kind of posted. Um and send us love, yeah. Follow her online as well. I think have you changed your handle, Anna? Yeah, no, it's, it's on the screen, yeah, so do follow her. Right, finally we are on the last bit of and the exciting bit of our event we're going to hear from Amber Davies. So Amber for me is a truly ray of sunshine. I don't know if you guys have um, been following her or listened to any of her podcasts but since basically I've met her and started following her online I've been learning and I've been educated by her and everything that she's doing or posting um, and just I've been generally just really taken by her beautiful energy not to say that I've <laughs> I've not met her in real life so we've not we've not met yet um, but even from the screen I can I can just feel her beautiful energy and I think Cardiff is lucky to have such a talented young lady um, um, Amber is a recent graduate in product, product design and her experiences with her body and health has, I think, made her content, made her a content creator in order to spread more awareness um, about ostomy. And I believe um, a better or more, I, th I think this has also is making her a better and more conscious designer as well. So I'm really excited to hear about Amber's journey from her and to share it with you. Thank you, Amber, for jo joining us. Um, let's all welcome Amber with uh, whatever you want to do that with. <laughs> oh, what an introduction. Thank you. I'm and going to stop sharing now so you can share, Amber. Cool. Thank you. Right. Are we all good? Yes. Yeah? There we go. Perfect. Cool. Yes. Right, thank you for that introduction. Um, and hello everyone else too, Chrysa. Thank you for having me this morning and thank you for joining as well. But if anything, I hope you can just switch off for 20 minutes or so from everything ongoing at the moment, which can be slightly overwhelming, I understand. So my name is Amber, I'm 22 years old and this is actually the first creative focused event I've spoken at so I'm really excited but please do bear with me. <laughs> so I was thinking about this talk and a photograph to use to represent myself and I thought easy right I'll pick out my most LinkedIn worthy staged creative looking photo and then I took a step back and I felt that something wasn't quite right. So I dug out another photo that I felt perhaps better represented me and strangely felt a little bit nervous, but I figured being open and sharing photos like this is a large reason and part of why I'm here and why I do what I do. So yeah, this is me as well. I'm stood in front of Buckingham Palace, having ran a 10k through London in my underwear, or runderwear as it's called, and I had my scar and stoma bag on show. So to rewind a little bit, uh, many of my years growing up look kind of more like this photo here. Um, and just an FYI, FYI, although it probably feels like there should be some kind of deep intense theatrical music playing in the background at this point there isn't because I view a lot of what's happened to me in quite a positive light but I feel it important to kind of chat about and give things a bit of background. So having suffered with pretty intense symptoms for as long as I can remember I was finally diagnosed with ulcerative colitis around the age of 13. Um, I say finally because I think I naively thought at this point that there'd be some magic one pill cure that would kind of 
get rid of my symptoms and allow me to live normally again. Now, I appreciate that some of you will probably be familiar with the disease and some maybe not at all. So to put simply, ulcerative colitis sits alongside Crohn's disease under the umbrella of inflammatory bowel disease, so IBD. And the charity Crohn's and Colitis UK says that IBD can cause ulceration and inflammation in the colon or any part of the digestive tract. Uh, they're unpredictable diseases, they're lifelong and even potentially life-threatening. And the impact of these conditions on education, work, social, family life, just everything can be a bit devastating. So symptoms can include diarrhea, often with blood, severe pain, fatigue, dramatic weight loss, swollen joints, mouth ulcers, eye, skin, and liver problems, just to name a few. Pretty glamorous, right? So one of the tricky things with these diseases is that there is no defined cause and there's no defined cure. So it impacts everyone differently. Um, and although there are a variety of treatments to try and get a hold of symptoms, there are a large number of patients who end up needing surgery. So as you can imagine, there are a huge number of taboos, stereotypes, misconceptions, and just generally negative connotations towards these diseases. And I'd be here all day if I were to chat through them all. So not so long ago, one of the companies I work with asked me to write about what IBD means to me. And I'm sure some of you will resonate when I say, I struggle to articulate it in words and I felt it much more comfortable, less daunting and probably more effective in my case to put a short clip together instead. So I thought it might be useful to share it with you guys to better understand me and my outlook before moving forward um, without any technical difficulties, I hope. guess that worked okay I hope it did um but just a heads up if you didn't guess already I tend to chat a lot of shit probably but I also chat a lot about shit so in that video you might have noticed a little bag on my stomach and in my case I was one of the individuals who needed surgery so it's a bit of an old-fashioned perspective but surgery is often viewed as kind of the last resort because it doesn't it still doesn't quite cure for you and of course surgery is surgery as well um, but in my case I'd worked my way through the list of treatments with very little luck just had a really low quality of life and without going into too much detail I was just losing too much blood for my body to keep up with and my bowel was so ulcerated it was just disintegrating inside of me so they ended up taking me down from for an emergency surgery just to remove the majority of my bowel and form a stoma so as you can see on the right hand side, my stoma is the little red piece of intestine sticking out of my stomach and that is what I wear the bag over, which in essence collects my poo. So I hope this picture kind of helps you get your head around it if it wasn't something you were familiar with already, because I definitely feel like I find making graphics like this much easier to explain things to people. Otherwise, often I find myself trying to explain it with words and people just stare at me blankly like I'm some sort of transformer or alien or something. But 
But as I mentioned previous, each individual's journeys are very different and I'd be here all day if I were to kind of explain all of the possibilities. But due to a number of reasons, I ended up having another emergency surgery a couple of years later when I was 19 to remove the remainder of my colon and rectum and make my stoma permanent, which has been an absolute game changer in terms of my health. So jumping back to pre-surgery, when I was about 16, in amongst all of these kind of trial and error treatments, I decided I wanted to study architecture. Now, I'm contradicting what I have to say later a bit by using this kind of stereotypical icon, but it's for a reason. So I was forced to take a year out of school due to my health and I'm not very good at not doing anything um, and I didn't want the year to go completely well wasted so when I was well enough to I went on work experience and ended up getting a part-time job in an architectural firm. I very soon realised that architecture was not what I'd anticipated and in fact it wasn't at all what I'd anticipated really paired with the fact that I was rather shit at it meant that I needed to go back to the drawing board. So in this time, it just happens to be that I had my first surgery, at which point I had no idea what a stoma was. But eventually I started getting used to looking after my appliance for myself. And I stu soon started recognising the impacts of products that were well designed and the kind of changes they made on day to day living, as well as arguably the worst impacts of not so well designed products. Um, and that's not just the direct physical products in terms of the bag and bits and bobs themselves, but also the design and perceptions of the wider world and community too. So I thought, that's it, I will study product design instead. So I reapplied to uni to do product design and from the get-go I was pretty set that at any opportunity I could I would work towards the problems I recognised or helping in people in any way I could really. It was around this time as well that I kind of turned to social media in hope of finding others like myself, not only to kind of connect with and learn from, but to hopefully help in return as well. And this platform has kind of transpired to be an absolute lifeline for me and many others I feel, paired with my other work, has led to some really fantastic opportunities over the years. So ahead of this talk, I decided to kind of image search the words design and disability. And unfortunately, I wasn't surprised to see images like this pop up in response. Now, this is not to say that designers don't use pencils or rulers and that people with disabilities don't use wheelchairs. But I think it's fair to say that both words represent a lot more than these images too. So I think it's fair in saying that both design and disability cover a wide spectrum. I mean, what does design look like and what does disability look like? I think the truth is neither have one look and both can probably be very easily overlooked. So through a variety of creative works, I've tried to challenge perceptions of disability as well as design to empower disability. I'm sure you've all heard it plenty of times, but creativity comes on a spectrum in itself too. And it's taken me as long as very recently to realize that all of my work probably draws upon creativity in some form. TikTok, that shit's creative and pretty hard. Um, standing up and talking about things that people don't know about or are traditionally uncomfortable with, that requires some creativity too. Um, so yeah, I thought I'd share a taste of a few different projects or types of work that I'm involved with that ties in a spectrum of creativity to raise awareness and empower people with perhaps IBD or stomas like myself or even wider disability. I understand it might be a bit like a whistle stop tour, but I'm more than happy to answer any questions or chat to anyone further about specific projects or anything really. Um, 
but you might wonder how or why it's relevant to you but ultimately I think I believe that inclusive design and representation of any sort benefits everyone in some way shape or form so I myself have experienced the impacts of kind of people's perceptions and societal standards which is a complete story for another day but one incident in particular made me think enough's enough I'm going to speak up about this in hope of creating some positive change so I've got another video here as like a brief overview which again I hope works we're in a bar with a group of friends, having a couple of drinks, a laugh, and a generally nice time. I've been back and forth to the toilet a few times now. My boyfriend comes with me to help when needed. When everything's eventually sorted and we leave the accessible toilet, we both get grabbed and pulled in separate directions, accused, shouted at, and threatened. If I were in a wheelchair or had a visible impairment, would I receive this reception? Disability and its needs comes in varying shapes and forms, and it's saddening that in this day and age, we cannot see beyond the obvious. So you might or might not have noticed, I'm not the best with words. Um, I'm epileptic as well, so I don't know if you notice, but I often forget what it is I'm trying to say or lose my words. So with the situation in question, it was pretty difficult. So I had to create, think creatively about the way I was going to get my point across and raise better awareness, ultimately, hopefully, to make change for better. So I wrote an open letter two Weatherspoons instead and posted it on Instagram in hope that people who were maybe a little bit better with words could back me up with the point I was trying to make and I received hundreds of messages of people in similar scenarios who have faced and continue to face discrimination of varying sorts um, some worse than my particular night in question with stories of people being thrown out or banned from establishments and sometimes even handled with verbal or physical abuse. So needless to say that I denied the uh, £10 gift voucher that Weatherspoons ever so kindly offered me to compensate and asked that they make some meaningful change instead. And long story short, as you can see in the article on the right, it did work slightly. <laughs> Something else that vividly sticks out for me is a day or two post-surgery, still not really knowing what a stoma was and too frightened to look down at my stomach. A lady comes into my hospital room and she plonked a pile of literature on my bed table and she introduced herself as my stoma care nurse and she started chatting about stomas and what I should be careful of and should no longer really be doing. And this is when I really started thinking like, shit, what has happened to me? But she interrupted herself saying she had something new and exciting that she could actually show me. So I thought, brilliant, something that might be a little bit nicer and more positive. So she came bouncing back in holding a leaflet that had an image of a woman who must have been in her mid 70s wearing this matching set of underwear. What I can only describe as granny pants, holding it up in front of herself, dancing around the room and telling me that I could still look a little bit sexy. Um, you know, I was like, brilliant, great. So don't get me wrong, I love me a pair of granny pants, but not that there's anything wrong with the underwear of this sort. 17 year old me certainly didn't need someone implying that I st still had a chance of uh, being good looking if I wore something like this. And actually I realized it's not that you can't wear other things with something like a stoma or normal things, it's that there's just no representation really. So as well as working with ostomy focused brands, I work with regular brands too to kind of help diversify representation, hopefully empower others and ultimately show that you can. So this was a collaboration with a clothing brand in the style not so long ago, which I'm really pleased gained a lot of attraction. And as you can see by just one of the hundreds of comments highlighted, it really does make things feel worth it. So as I touched on, much of the literature that was handed to me post-surgery consisted of wording and imagery such as on this slide here. And when they did get on to important topics such as returning to exercise or relationships, they'd say things like, if you want to have sex, speak to your partner about sex. 
And again, as an active, aspirational young woman, I didn't feel like this was enough, really. So I wanted to work on a creative project that handled unmet topic areas and ultimately helped others feel more normal, whatever normal may be. And just that little bit less alone, hopefully. However, when I proposed a podcast solution, I was questioned as to whether that was creative or consisted any design work. Now, no offence to anybody who's designed those leaflets, but again, they were certainly not useful to a 17 year old me. I am definitely a firm believer that everyone should feel heard and spoken to and ultimately included. So in the podcast series, there's healthcare professionals in there, athletes, business people, a sex worker. I even roped in my partner to chat about relationships and I can confirm that creating a podcast consisted of a hell of a lot of design work. Inevitably studying product design, I have developed physical products too. So this was my final major project, which focused on helping people with stomas manage their appliance when out and about, which can often be a really stressful and unhygienic task depending on facilities. But something that the project really taught me, which I think is useful to all really, is recognising when to design to empower rather than highlight disability and have the empathy to understand user needs, which is why I feel like it's so important that we immerse ourselves in our creative projects and briefs as much as possible, really. And the final project that I'd like to share today is an article developed for print in the EasyJet in-flight magazine earlier this year. The article was titled Small Changes, Big Impacts, and it discussed probably to many seemingly insignificant changes such as adaptions to waste collection and accessible toilet signage but for people like myself pose really significant impacts actually and that's the line I'd like to leave you guys with as a reminder today I guess is a collective of small creative changes whatever they may, may be can make such a big impact on a larger or wider scale Design doesn't always look like a pencil and a ruler and disability doesn't always look like a wheelchair. I really hope I've managed to give you some insight amongst all of my blab and thank you for listening.